Hallelujah. Josh, what an incredible honor and what a privilege. I've known your family now for about five years. Mom and dad are present and here. And it is such a joy and privilege to be a part of your journey with Jesus Christ. And after the way the Lord moved upon your heart last week, it is very evident that your heart and your spirit is tender. Now, I want to say a few things, not only to you, but to those that are watching. Water baptism is biblical. It is scriptural. And when you go into the Word of God and you dig deep on the subject of baptism, there was only one way in which believers were baptized, and that was into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. That is important because Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, God manifest in the flesh, is the only one who possessed in human form sinless blood. And He is the only one that died and was crucified, whose side was pierced from whence flowed that sinless, precious blood of Jesus. And so it is that we are baptized into His name because when we speak His name, it brings His blood according to Acts chapter 5. Now, we are baptized for the remission of our sins. And I want you to remember this, Josh, for as long as you live. We are not baptized to join this church. We are not water baptized to become a part of a particular faith or persuasion. We are simply in obedience to the word water baptized for the remission or the washing away of our sin. The sin that came upon humanity in the Garden of Eden that could never be eradicated except through the sinless, spotless Lamb that we have come to know as Jesus. And so, Josh, this morning you've made a decision. Mom and Dad have not decided this for you. Your family has not pressured you. Your age or turning a certain age did not command you to step forward and say, I want to be baptized. But your tender heart, sensitive to God's Spirit, spoke to you as you have testified that it was time to take this very critical and essential spiritual step as a believer in Jesus Christ. And so, Josh, it is an honor. It is a privilege. I love you. You are growing into a fine young man, and it is amazing to just be a part of your life and to watch the hand of God come down upon you. And I can't wait to see what he has for your future. But here and now, Josh, upon that, the profession of his faith, Segundo a sua profissão de fé. And his obedience to the word of the living God. E a sua obediência à palavra de Deus. It is now my privilege to water baptize you into Jesus name. Agora é um privilégio meu poder te batizar em nome de Jesus.
Praise the Lord. We'll put our hands together and let's, let's give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. How beautiful and powerful a young boy, 14 years old. God has a way of speaking to the hearts of His creation that which He desires of you. And if God is speaking to you, we are more than thrilled to be able to be a part of your spiritual journey and baptize you here at the Pentecostals of Mandeville. If not, find a church somewhere near you that would be willing to baptize you in the only saving name under heaven, the name of Jesus Christ, whereby we must be saved. At this time, Gloria, uh, Victoria Buris, excuse me, Victoria, would you come? It is a privilege and an honor. Easy. Victoria, as I mentioned, her and her family have been here since the second week that we have, as a church, been in existence. And as I mentioned, it's such a special time and such an extra special baptism in that you were the first person that the Lord Jesus Christ ever filled with the baptism of His Spirit in this new preaching point and this new church when it was founded in 2005. And Victoria, to see you and the woman that you're growing into, the powerful woman of God, gifted, anointed with so many incredible talents that God has bestowed upon you and to watch you grow and develop and come up through your years and your teenage years and now as a young adult to see you want to renew your commitment and your life to Jesus Christ is so heart moving and heartwarming and it is an absolute privilege and I pray that you will never forget this day. I remind you and you know that I have to say this that when you come up out of this water, you are going to be more cleansed and cleaner than on the day that your mother and father took you home from the hospital. We are not baptizing you because you are not a devout Christian. We are not baptizing you because somehow and somewhere along the way you fell off but because in your heart as an adult with the ability to make a decision and come before God in repentance and godly sorrow, you have decided all over again that this is too important that you do not fully seal the depth of spiritual meaning in your heart of your own volition and memory. And so today, Victoria, according to your continued profession of faith and your continual walk in the obedience as you understand it to the Word of God, it is now my privilege as your pastor to water baptize you into the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Oh, praise the Lord. Once again, what a great honor. Why don't we all over again give God some praise? Hallelujah. We're so grateful for what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. God is not confined by a church. He is not confined to brick and mortar. The Spirit of the Lord is alive and well in the earth. And God is able to reach into homes and into hearts and to bring about His purpose and His perfect plan for each and every one of us. We are going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a need this morning, God knows where you are. He knows what you need. And He is more than able to reach down. And He is able to touch your life with His virtue. And God is listening. And we are grateful for a God who hears us from heaven. This morning there are several requests on your screen. But I would like to mention this morning Linda Adams. Uh, she is a member of this church and helps uh, for si some time now in our nursery. She has been hospitalized uh, with high blood pressure and TIAs. And so we remember Linda Adams. Uh, we also want to pray for Beth Ann Perilou for peace and comfort. She lost her mom a few days ago. We remember the Bruno family, the Keating family in this respect as well. We continue to pray for Julie Calli and we're believing God to miraculously eradicate the seizures that she has been having. And last but not least today, we want to remember Seal Harkins who is at the Heritage Manor nursing home and those that are there along with her as three new cases of COVID have been identified this week and so we want to pray over Seal Harkins and all of those that are residing there at Heritage Manor. Would you join me this morning in prayer, praying in the name of Jesus and believing God to do the work that He promised to do. Dearest Heavenly Father, we come this morning. We come in the name of Jesus. We speak, Lord God, into the atmosphere, healing and faith. We bind fear today. Day, and we release your virtue, Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, I pray for every name and every family that has been mentioned and those that have not been mentioned. Lord, you know our needs before we even ask. You know what we're going through. You know what we're facing. You know what we're fighting in our health or perhaps in other areas of our lives. But Jesus, we know that we have an open invitation to come before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help grace to heal grace to comfort in Lord God our time of trouble and need and so Lord today we remember the Cali family the Bruno family we remember the Harkins family we remember Lord God the, the Bruno family the Keating family we remember the Perilou family and Lord a touch on Linda Adams life in the name of Jesus Christ to everyone at home listening who has brought their petition before you father do as you will in Jesus name and we say a great big amen. And on the heels of that amen, we give a warm welcome to all of our guests that are watching today. Let's welcome all of our guests that have joined in online to church with us this morning at the Pentecostals of Mandeville. Those that are tuned in via a live watch party or those that are just tuned in live somehow on your smartphone or tablet, we welcome you this morning into the presence of the Lord. To our church family, we love you, we miss you, and we are counting down the days that we will be together again. But nevertheless, we are of one heart, of one mind, bound together by one blood, and we want you to know that we miss you, and I am so thankful for the privilege and honor of pastoring an absolutely God-fearing and amazingly anointed and precious church family. Amen. You may be seated if you're not already. Praise God. Amen. I sure hope we're together again soon. 
will be listening ever so intently over this next week or two as we see what the governor decides to do in opening back up our state and as our president has mentioned about the urgency and necessity to open up our nation. To, if you are a guest today, we again would like to welcome you online. We're so glad that you were here. And if you've been blessed by this service and you'd like to know a little bit more about the POM, have us pray for you and perhaps interested in Bible study, please contact the person that either invited you to join online or contact our church office via our website. You could find more information at the POM.org. We are glad to do that. Also, please be sure if you're not already subscribed and following us on our YouTube channel, we would love to see you follow us and subscribe. It is a powerful tool. In fact, our first lady was a part of a ladies conference yesterday in Michigan and they showed her service and her teaching and preaching through the YouTube channel. And so let's be sure to take advantage of technology in the spreading of the gospel. And it's just a wonderful day to be alive and to know that the work of God is going forth in the earth and we look forward to being with everyone again also on Wednesday into the house of the Lord this morning why don't we get our offering ready or perhaps get your device ready to go and bring your offering to the Lord and there's so much to say and I know that sometimes it seems as if what else can be said about the tithe and offering and the vision and mission fund and the privilege that it is to give and return to the Lord as he has blessed us and so this morning I trust that we all understand the concept we all understand the blessing that is attached to living out this biblical requirement by the God that gave us everything we possess. So why don't we pray today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are no words and not enough ways. If we were to live a thousand years, if we were to, Lord God, expand the human vocabulary, how could we ever use or utilize 26 letters in forming enough words or sentences to be able to express adequate gratitude and praise to the one who created it all and yet needs nothing from your creation but lord you give us the opportunity to give so that we can be blessed not because you need a blessing because we need the blessings of heaven to fall upon our lives and so lord in every house today in every family i pray that you would open the windows of heaven and let the rich dew of your sweet glory fall upon every soul and upon every individual that is, Lord God, listening and that has, O oh God, unlocked the windows of heaven through their obedient sacrifice. I pray a blessing and I speak life in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Why don't we take a few moments and give to the Lord today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say <clears throat> at the onset again, thank you. Thank you, faithful saints of God, for your faithful giving. I trust and believe with all of my heart and soul that the Lord has something special in store for the Pentecostals of Mandeville. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know that He is a never-failing God and that His promises are going to come to pass over our lives. Is anyone ready for the Word this morning? Amen. I am ready for the Word of God. I need the Word. 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And with all the atmosphere being tainted by fear and anxiety, we need a deluge of faith to come into our hearts and minds today. And the gateway is the ear for faith cometh by hearing. Amen. Victor Frankl, psychotherapy and Holocaust survivor, wrote in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, that prisoners within the Nazi concentration camps usually died around Christmas time. The following is a passage from his book. The death rate in the week between Christmas 1944 and New Year's 1945 increased in camp beyond all previous experience. In his opinion, the explanation for this increase did not lie in the harder working conditions or the deterioration of their food supplies or a change of wealth or new epidemics. It was simply that the majority of the prisoners had lived in the naive hope that they would be home again by Christmas. As the time drew near and there was no encouraging news, the prisoners lost courage and disappointment overcame them. This had a dangerous influence on their powers of resistance and a great number of them died. Frankel developed a concept that he called tragic optimism. That is an optimism in the face of tragedy. It is the idea that whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And it was similar to the Stockdale paradox. Now, the Stockdale paradox is a concept that was popularized by Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great. James Stockdale was a former vice presidential candidate, highly decorated naval officer, and a Vietnam prisoner of war. On September 9, 1965, while flying a which had been struck by enemy fire and completely disabled. He parachuted into a small village where he was then severely beaten and taken prisoner. He spent the next seven and a half years on episodes of torture, locked legs in irons, and spent four grueling years in isolation and yet in 1973 by none other than a miracle he returned home a war hero in his discussion with Collins for the book Stockdale speaks about how the optimists fared in the camp and the dialogue goes like this Collins asked who didn't make it out oh that's easy he said the optimists the optimists? I don't understand. I said now completely confused given what he had said a hundred meters earlier. He said the optimists, oh they were the ones who said we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come and Christmas would go. Then they'd say we're going to be out by Easter and Easter would come and go. And then Thanksgiving and then it would be Christmas again. And they died of a broken heart. And this morning with the help of God. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I preach to us the subject. Prisoners of hope. Zechariah 9 and 12 reads. Turn you to the stronghold. Ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare. That I will render unto thee double. Stockdale's pain began soon after he ejected from his burning plane. And as he floated down to the little village street in North Vietnam, he whispered to himself, five years down there, five years at least. But he said, I'm leaving behind a world of technology and entering the world of Epictetus. 
Epictetus was a first century crippled Roman slave turned Stoic philosopher who taught that the Stoic has separate files in his or her mind. One file for things that are within their power and a second file for things that are beyond his or her power. Which things will doom us to fear and anxiety if we worry about them. In the 30 seconds before he lands, Stockdale was pounced on by more than a dozen waiting Vietnamese soldiers. And he accepted that soon everything outside of his human control, even his own physical body, but yet his opinions, his judgments, his attitude, his grief and joy. What about these feelings and emotions? They were entirely within his control. Hallelujah. You and I, much like Stockdale in our lives, there are times and there are circumstances and there are situations much like this coronavirus that we find ourselves taken captive and being held hostages by the crises that we experience in our lives. Right now, I know we've said it for so many weeks, weeks on end, but we cannot ignore the brutal reality that we're living in right now as a people of God and as a nation. Yes, the coronavirus is running rampant and it is a crisis of epidemic proportion. The financial forecast, it looks gloomy and doomy. Our careers in many ways have seemingly been stymied or cut short for some our graduates even at a very elementary level compared to what's going on around the globe we've got graduates that are in a crisis not knowing what will be of their ending year of high school going into their years of college frustrated and uncertain what will the future hold as well our seniors looking at the health care system and wondering are we disposable or are we going to be given all the care that we need it is a crisis and so many others like it in the world in which you and I live. The psalmist who is not titled to be the credited writer David and yet we can deduce that it was David in Psalm 42 and 5 who cried from his soul and said why art thou cast down O my soul. David said, why? Why am I feeling like I'm feeling? Why am I so disquieted within myself? It is the cry of one perhaps like you and I in this time of uncertainty. It is the cry of one who feels that he has been taken captive. Internally, he is in great commotion. He feels overwhelmed by his circumstances and confined by the crisis that he finds himself in. David, perhaps like you and I in areas of our lives or within the confines of our mind and emotions, he, he feels trapped in tumult. And his roar, why am I feeling like I'm feeling, is agitated as the troubled sea. But it was Stockdale, this incredible war hero, who said that we must never confuse faith that you and I will prevail in the end, which we can never afford to lose. We must not confuse it with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of our current reality, whatever they might be. That is a paradox and this paradox has never been more pertinent, nor the ability to patiently persevere so important as in our day, as in this day. As our nation looks for signs that it is flattening 
the curve. I heard this week the governor of New York tell his citizens, he said, you did this. God did not do this. Prayer did not do this. Faith did not do this. I am sorry, Mr. Governor, but I come today and stand flat-footed at a pulpit of righteousness, and I declare that God in all of his mercy and all of his sovereignty, sir, he did do this. He heard the prayers of the righteous being prayed throughout the land. And God always has chosen to work having humanity at his side. But it is power of prayer and faith and the almighty working on our behalf that is doing what scientists deem them themselves to have been the engineers of. We have been keeping our distance from family and friends and loved ones. We are feverishly washing our hands. I thought this interesting that a recent poll taken by ABC found that 56% of Americans do not expect to resume their regular routine until after July 1st. And yet so many others, they are using the hashtag 30 more days and they're making plans for May and June because everyone seems so eager to get back to business as usual. But Stocksdale approach was to come up with a way of actually functioning in the circumstances that we find ourselves uh, so that we can find a way to function day in and day out for as long as it went on without tragic optimism. Now, we are living in a world that is facing a global task. This new stay-at-home reality for as long as it takes. You see, we are struggling, and no doubt each of us in our own unique way. We struggle because our lives were on warp speed. We live with lightning-fast internet. We instantly download, and we receive day-later Amazon deliveries. And yet when the suffering and the discomfort comes as human beings, even those that are filled with faith, when it comes, our approach intuitively is to want to just escape. And so we have reached for so long for a pill. We have tried to find a quick fix to fill the void and avoid the suffering and the waiting. And when we can't do it, we grow impatient. And impatience, sometimes it takes over in our lives and it manifests as anger or anxiety or frustration when impatience comes in. But there's a flip side to impatience. You see, the flip side are those of us who become despondent and we become despondent because the desired results are not happening according to our expectation of time frame. And what he said is that that is where we are most vulnerable to lose heart and give up. And in Stockdale's world, these were those who were taken as prisoners of war. You see, a POW's perspective, it assesses the situation and quickly drowns in a deluge of doubt and despair. They reconcile their current reality as permanent rather than just a temporary time and moment. They see no way out. They can see or discern no way of escape. But I've come to declare from the word of God today that God is faithful. And he will not suffer you and I to be attempted above that which we are able. But with the temptation, God will make a way of escape so that you and I can endure. So that you and I can hold on. So that you and I are able to bear it and make it until he comes to our rescue. Like James Stockdale who came home in 1973. 
a war hero. I don't know about you, but I expect to, to come out of this a, a hero, not a hostage. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be held hostage by what's going on right now in our world. Hostage by the headlines. Held hostage by fear. No, no, no. I refuse. But I am going to see a way and you are going to see a way of escape. And we're going to be able to bear it for however long God deems to be because He is faithful. We look Psalm 42 and 5. The cry of David is repeated again in verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? David's faith is reasoning with his fears. David's hope is arguing with his sorrow. Are these present troubles, you and I asking ourselves the same question, are these present troubles going to last forever? And as we eavesdrop on the anguish-filled self-expression of the psalmist, he seemingly finds himself in a tug of war between hope and his reality. Between hope and his reality. And I love, I wish I had time today. Go read Psalm 42 this afternoon in its entirety. There is a shift after verse 5. And for the next four verses, David refuses to become a POW. He refuses to be imprisoned by his circumstances. And he fights through his faithless fainting and prevails in shifting his perspective. He is able to shift his perspective. And in verse 6, he said, Oh my God, my soul is disquieted or cast down within me. David's not ignoring the reality, the brutal reality of the circumstances. But in the circumstance, he's able to shift his perspective. And he said, Therefore will I remember thee. David goes on in those verses to declare the loving kindness of God. He begins to declare that God is his song in the nighttime and in the daytime and that his prayer will be made to the God of his life. In the midst without anything changing David goes from a captor to a praiser of God and he's talking to himself. You've heard me say before the power of self-talk is is so important in this spiritual time in which we're living because there's so much going on around us filling and flooding the airwaves that would try to suffocate our spiritual perspective but David said as the confidence builds throughout the psalm you can hear it he's not repeating himself because nothing's changing he's repeating himself because confidence is building he's talking to himself and he said hope thou in God and I will yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. His sad countenance is about to shine. The anchor still holds and there's still reason and room for hope for David and there's still reason and room for hope for you and hope for me. I want you to know today the anchor still holds. The anchor has not moved. Hold on somebody because help is on its way. And you and I, when fear and sorrow and despondency and grief and unbelief want to attempt to hold you and I hostage. I go to the words of the Apostle Paul that the weapons, because we're not powerless, P-O-M, we are not powerless. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Fear is a stronghold. Grief is a stronghold. Doubt 
heart uh, is a stronghold. But what Paul said uh, is grab hold uh, of your weapon uh, and cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God says I'm going to make a way of escape. The knowledge of God says you're coming out. The knowledge of God says you're going to make it. The knowledge of God says you're going to be abundant. You're going to prosper. You're going to be a hero, not a hostage. That's what the knowledge of God declares and the promise he said we are more than conquerors so when the soul is cast down the, the word of God said that you and I have the power we become the captor and we cast down those imaginations and now the pendulum swings and you and I are the ones that are bringing into captivity not being held captive every thought to the old obedience of Christ so when your soul feels disquieted within you know that we are not going to be captive but become the captors you see it was Viktor Frankl who I spoke about at the very onset he said everything can be taken from a man but one thing the last of human freedoms and that is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances and my spirit goes to the book of Acts and chapter 16 they put stripes upon the back of the apostle Paul and Silas they took them and cast them into a prison they brought them before the magistrate they thrust them their feet in stocks they were in a crisis of me of epic proportion but the scripture said in verse 25 that in the darkest hour of this day and in the midst of this crisis at midnight Paul and Silas hallelujah they begin to pray they begin to sing praises unto God they were immobilized but something on the inside was stirred and it said that the prisoners heard them they made a noise God was their song in the night the foundation shook the door swung open the bands were loosed and that's what I prophesy to you and to me and to this church in the midst of this crisis if we can rise up at midnight and hear the song of God being sung over our lives POM now more than ever we need to hit our knees in prayer we need to lift our voice in prayer we need to sing praises unto God even if you're confined by your living room or your situation praise and that worship and true freedom because you can fear those uh, that can kill the body but there's one uh, that is able to save the soul and our bands are going to be loosed uh, to live the life that God has preordained and destined for you and I to live Victor Frankl said it like this the one thing that you can't take away from me is the way that I choose to respond to what you've done to me you can put me as a prisoner you can torture me you can beat me you can punish me but you cannot dictate the way I feel in my attitude and the way I respond to what's going on around me hallelujah I wonder today are we going to be taken as prisoners of war or are we going to rise up in the midst of this situation and day of darkness and become the prisoners of hope that God calls us to be it was the prophet in that little tiny book who began to look and shift his perspective found in the book of Habakkuk in the third chapter the 17th verse he looked around in his world and it 
was doom and it was gloom, but his perspective would not hold him prisoner. He looked and said, if the fig tree doesn't blossom, if there's no fruit on the vines, if the olive leaf somehow fails, if the fields produce no fruit, if the flocks be cut off from the fold, and at the end of the day, if the stalls are empty and there are no herds and there are no horses, the old prophet said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. You see, a prisoner of hope will stand up and survey his and her surroundings and in spite of anything that your eyes and my eyes see, we decide within ourselves, am I going to give God praise or am I going to suck my thumb and let my soul be disquieted within me? I don't know about you. I wish I could take off and run a lap and go crazy up in the Holy Ghost. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. It's a choice. He said, I will. I choose. I decide to rejoice in the Lord my God. You see, in our opening text this morning, it's a blessing found in the Bible. For the Bible declared by the prophet, you and I return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Today I declare I will restore to you double. It is a powerful promise. It is powerful. The prophet Zechariah declares this double blessing to the Jewish prisoners of war. But notice, he calls them, God calls them prisoners of hope. They're polar opposites. So which are they? Are they prisoners of war or are they prisoners of hope? It's a decision that is left to them and how they perceive their reality. So it depends, as it did then, as it does today, on you and me. It depends on our perspective. If we let the circumstances become prisoners to our perspective, but if we let God define the way we see our circumstances, we become prisoners of hope. Let me just tell you and remind you, those of you that are part of this church family, let me tell you, for three long months, we were held prisoner in Jacksonville last year. The crisis was overwhelming. The cry was, oh my soul, why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted looking at life-threatening surgeries, looking at confinement and isolation and distance in a foreign land, if you will, spiritually there alone in Florida, waiting and being operated on and going through recovery and setback and healing and setback, prisoners of war. And there were moments that that was our true perspective. But through it all, there came a point in time, there was a shift that we understood God in His sovereignty set us aside and had us isolated for a greater purpose and so that He could get the glory. And when we shifted our perspective and we began the way and the lens through which we were going to define our circumstances, Sister Malik prisoners of war or captive by the crisis, at some point in time, we became hope. Hallelujah. Prisoners of hope. You see, you can imprison me. You can physically put you and I in a prison. But you can never imprison me if I'm already imprisoned by hope and the promises of God. You can put me behind your bars, but you cannot extinguish my praise. Neither can you blind my perspective on the one in whom I trust and is my confidence. Five times, 
five times the Apostle Paul, he referred to himself as the Lord's prisoner. He was happy and he understood in spite of the torture, in spite of the beatings, in spite of the perils, he said, I am a prisoner of hope. And here is the echo of his heart. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? That's the cry of a prisoner of hope. Christ. He said whether it's tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, peril, sword, nakedness or death. He said for I am persuaded because that is what a prisoner of hope is. They are persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor the thing present or thing Any other creature, hallelujah, shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I want to tell somebody today that right there in your crisis, right there behind what appeared to be bars, uh, holding you back, uh, putting you on the sideline. of despondency to wash over you let me tell you that if God be for you then no one can be against you but that which the enemy would try to use you'll get a perspective hallelujah of a prisoner of hope Ha! nothing shall separate us from the love of God not a virus not a disease not a mandate not a stay at home order nothing can contain my praise or restrain my faith in Israel had experienced a bitter defeat Babylonians they were at the mercy of their captors they were being held back from worship at the house of the their faith and laughing in their face but God said to them I am going to give you a double blessing God reminds them of who is going to have the last laugh can I tell somebody today, as we set off in 2020 declaring a year of double blessing, can I tell you and tell myself in the presence of God that our lives and God's plan for us in 20 and 20 is still on schedule can I tell you that God did not go back to the drawing board to re-engineer his plan for your family his plan for your future his plan for your finance God is not going back uh, to the drawing board and burning the midnight oil God is still on schedule hallelujah we are merely prisoners of hope and for their pain, he prescribed the promise of a double blessing. And I declare that double blessing for our pain in this season. The NIV version says it like this. God said, I will restore twice as much to you. In the NLT, it says, I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. If that doesn't give you and I cause uh, to get up on our feet and begin to shout and begin to praise uh, regardless of how confined we feel right now, he said, I'm going to give you a double blessing. And I speak that double blessing. I bless you with that double blessing. I declare that double blessing and know that at the end, Perfectly unfolded in prisoner of hope. You can't take me as a estimate POM. We must not underestimate the blessing of God, who is the one who promises a double blessing. If he made the promise. To these Jewish refugees living in 5th century B.C. Then that same promise belongs to you. And that same promise belongs to me today. And it's only because of this one reality. 
that the one that made the promise is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he is the same forever. God is unchanged, and therefore his grace is the ground for unshaken hope. God's grace is the ground for unshaken hope. That word, prisoner of hope, the word in the Hebrew is tikva. Tikva means cord. It means hope or expectation. And can I tell you today that we have got to take hold of hope. We have got to become the hostage of hope. We have got to become imprisoned by the promises of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Not what we see, not how we feel, not what the news and media tell us is the going to be the future and the outcome of our nation or our world. Hallelujah. Take hold of the hope and become imprisoned by it all over all over the body of Christ stand with me this morning all over this body wherever you may be whatever you're going through right now whatever crisis you find yourself in and perhaps you can relate more in this moment to the cry of David but go back and read again Psalm 42 David didn't camp out in verse 5 he reminded himself of who he was and whose he was. And throughout the discourse of that psalm, David built in his confidence and he found a courage. Take courage, my heart. Take courage, my soul. It's in the waiting. It's in the waiting. Stockdale, this is what he said at the end of his story and his testimony. He said this, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never doubted not only that I would get out, but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into a defining or the defining event of my life, which in retrospect, I would not trade. What are you and I going to do in this moment? Are we going to allow what we're living through to take us prisoners of war? Or are we going to allow what we're experiencing in the here and now to be a defining moment that shifts the outcome of our lives, our families, and our spiritual faith in God? Because this is, whether we recognize it or not, it is a defining life event. Will it take you prisoner? Or will you surrender in becoming a prisoner of hope? I tell us today, we must choose. But for those who choose hope over fear and despondency, for those who choose hope, there's a double blessing that awaits us. I want us to pray right now with all your heart. I want you to pray. I want you to be honest with God. He already knows what you're feeling. And I want you to begin to let God's countenance shift your sadness and put a smile on your face this morning. Come on, let's pray. Let's declare out loud, Father, I will not be taken pre-O-W. I am going to be a prisoner of hope. I will hope in you. I will remember you. You're my song during the day. You are the song of my midnight hour. I'm going to pray. I'm going to praise. I'm going to be lost and surrender into the grasp and the clutches of your promises, O oh God. O oh God of my salvation. O oh God. Ah, you are my God, the God of my life. And it's unto you that I bring my prayer today. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, and I speak, Lord God, a double blessing of hope. 
a double blessing of courage, a double blessing of faith. I pray, Lord, for the courage right now to shift our perspective from wherever it is that we stand through whatever bars we might be looking through right now. Let rays of hope, let rays of encouragement, let rays of your countenance pierce the darkness and penetrate the bars as we surrender and take hold of the cord that is our hope in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Restore.